Many scientists are worried about the future of the Environmental Protection Agency. The Trump administration wants to cut the EPA's budget by around 25 percent. Now, that proposal includes a significant reduction of staff as well. But as Mark Phillips discovered on a recent trip to Antarctica for his Climate Diary series, a new funding model for research is giving scientists hope. Tourists paying about $20,000 for the trip of a lifetime are helping to subsidize researchers who are tagging along. Are we ready to fly? Ready for more than your average holiday. <laughs> Coming to Antarctica as a tourist can be a truly shocking experience. It's a trip for the intrepid, and not just because you can do this. It's a full immersion experience Here we go. in so many ways. The operators don't call these cruises, they call them expeditions. And that's not just a way of adding to the romance of following in the footsteps of the great explorers, of seeing things way off the beaten track. It's because these trips also involve science. These take time-lapse pictures of what Like the research that Eric Guth is doing. One photo every hour. This documenting of the ever-increasing speed of glacial ice flow probably wouldn't happen if the tourists didn't come. Here you get this hybrid mix where people are paying big bucks to come down as a tourist trip, but that also helps the kind of work that you do. I think, yeah, it is a formula that I would like to see continue. It may have to. With an administration of climate change skeptics in Washington, the science that gets done on these trips might not otherwise happen. And you can clearly see this, this big trend of increasing temperatures that's been happening. Ken Taylor is one of the world's preeminent ice scientists, whose work has provided essential data on the Earth's climate history. And he says the writing about funding cuts has been on the wall since day one. Well, we've already gotten indications from our federal funding agencies, particularly National Science Foundation, that we should anticipate budget cuts. You should anticipate. should anticipate budget cuts. Uh, didn't take very long after the election for that word to come down. Even when research is government funded, the money often doesn't go far enough. John Durbin is an employee of the NOAA Fisheries Department and uses a drone to check on the welfare of Antarctic whales in these changing times. There are some tail whales in the area. But there's no way he and his co researcher, Holly Fernbach, could be here if they didn't get a ride from the Lindblad National Geographic tour operators who see bringing actual scientists along as part of the appeal to their customers. It costs hundreds of thousand of dollars if you were going to charter a research vessel and, and come down here on here with this group. Right. It's a wonderful relationship that we have. Ah! A relationship that has to continue if the work is to go on. This is the seventh year in a row that we've conducted research on board this ship. You know, we're studying animals that live as long as we do. Um, and uh, to understand them and to get enough opportunities with them, it takes multiple years. Uh, those are the first seals right there. The tourists, for all the fun they're having, are effectively underwriting the science. Part of the substantial ticket prices for adventures like this goes to covering the costs of the work that's being done on board. And not only don't the tourists seem to mind, they think it's a good idea. Many, like Lori Fai from Austin, All right, here we go. came here for more than the thrills. They came out of a sense of commitment to the environmental cause. I really think it's a shame that the science is in the crosshairs of politics because it doesn't take much to understand that, that we are having a detrimental effect collectively on the, on the world. They come here for the experience and they leave with even more than memories. They leave with knowledge. The scientists on board give the tourists a sense of purpose, and if it weren't for the tourists, the scientists wouldn't be here. It's a marriage made in heaven. Mark Phillips, CBS This Morning, Antarctica. Absolutely beautiful. I'm yeah. not a fan of the cold, but I would actually like to do that. I've never seen a penguin in person. We could get you up there? Well, <laughs> yeah, I would actually well, do that. In part because of global warming, it hit yeah. over 60 degrees in yeah, Antarctica that, this yeah. week. Okay, no, it's a tropical trip now. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it more appealing. Yeah. I'd like to go. I think For all that's the wrong very reasons. Cool. Okay. You're right. <laughs>